Hello, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory. Great show for you this week. Got plenty to get through. We've got, um, obviously we're going to be discussing the forum. We're going to have a look around the forum like we did last week. It's quite a hit with everybody. Everybody enjoyed that. So we're going to go back later on in the show and have a look at that. We've got a full inbox first review. Still haven't opened it. Um, of the new Great Walls Devastator in 148. So we'll be having a look at that kit, um, as well as we're going to be talking about all the other bits and pieces that have been going on. So anyway, um, busy week this week. First of all, big, big welcome to all the new subscribers to the site. I've had almost 70 of you this week, and to have the 70 in a week is unprecedented. Um, so a big warm welcome to all of you. Most of you are finding your way around everything okay. Remember, to get to the actual forum itself, you're going to have to register for with the forum with the same username as you registered for the site. Now, I keep going on about this, but some of you still miss it. It does have to be the same, that way we can tie in the two. And if I see you there, I can click you through straight away or the system takes about an hour when it checks itself over and over as it goes through on a sort of hourly cycle. So just in like that, any other problems, contact me button, just shout me uh, an email through that system and I'll answer it straight away no matter where I am and we get you sorted out on the site. Most of you found your way through, no problems at all. Um, other people are coming back as well, you've been away um, after Christmas and things like that and finding you can't get into the site. That's the real name change that we did. Everyone uses their real name now on the site uh, and the system knows you as your real name instead of um, avatar names and things like that. That's the problem with that one. Easiest way to do it, click on forgot my password, enter your email address and it will give you your username and your password. Your passwords are unchanged, there's no difference on that but that's the trouble that people have been having. If not, same thing, contact me, I can bring up your details instantly uh, and I can email you straight back within an hour. So no problem with that. Um, a couple of things, we were out of stock, as a lot of you know of the sanding sticks uh, and the sanding sponges, sorry. I've been out of stock of those for about a fortnight and it was a real pain, but I had a very large order that turned up this week. All 52,000 sanding sticks have all turned up now. So obviously we've packaged them up and getting them all ready to go. They're back on the site again. So they're all there along with the polishers, which are very popular as well. So we've got those going. The other thing as well, we went out of stock last weekend, almost straight away, of the basic airbrushing two. You took me all totally by surprise how many of you went out and bought it. Um, they came back in stock yesterday, uh, which is Wednesday. Um, so they're back in stock and we've got large quantities of those so if you didn't get them if you placed an order I think if we run out it would have been mid-Sunday um, we had to wait a few days for them to come in because obviously we don't burn the discs here they get burnt for us and then we pop them in our cases so they are all back in stock now and all ready to go whilst we're talking of things in stock Sprue Brothers had a very large order go out to them this week uh, over in the US great people if you've never used Sprue Brothers before they're our US distributor for everything we do and they carry our entire range of everything from all the DVDs right the way through to sanding sticks uh, the washes obviously and the pigments as well so everything is there it's all back in stock the other thing as well which I will point out a lot of people have been asking me for the older DVDs we don't do them anymore on the site and I can't just burn you a few off and send them people at Sprue do have some of the older ones still in stock so if you want to get yourself some of those just pop over to Sprue Brothers and he's got the ones we've discontinued such as we get asked a lot for the A10 uh, and the Typhoon and things like that they've got over in stock so you can always get it straight from them great service and obviously they're a lot lot quicker than ordering from us here in the UK because it takes about a week to 10 days to get to the US these days and obviously Sprue Brothers they get their stuff out the same day so uh, if you are looking for anything Sprue Brothers in the US are for you okay so what else have we got going on we've actually um we've got the monthly prize draw um ended obviously last month um and we've got to congratulate Stuart ramsey for winning that um so he gets the 50 pound thing so we can use that either as subscription for a year uh plus he can have some washes sanders uh, pigments whatever 50 quid's worth members prices as well it's not the full price uh, it's the members discount prices for that um just shoot me a pm and we can do it like that i have emailed you and pm'd you but i haven't it back from you so if you want to enter, I'll show you this a bit later, we're going to talk about going in the forum um, and um, I will shoot you, you know, just pop your name in the list, usually a couple of hundred you enter every month. All we do, pick a random number from out of that list, so anywhere between number two and whoever the last one in was, and then they get to win. As simple as that, but you do have to be a subscriber and you do have to be on the forum as well. So there's no point just sending me, sent in to me, you can have to subscribe on the forum and then put your name in onto it and we can do it just like that. So, the transal. He says, taking a deep breath, some kits go together very well. Some kits are a complete and utter nightmare. Some kits just confuse the arse off you, and this is definitely one of them. It should be a straightforward build, let's face it. 
It's a good kit. It's Revell. It's recessed panel lines. It's quite modern. It's about the mid noughties about 2006, I think this one was designed and everything else like that. So you've got all the usual things that go together very well with a kit of this age. Unfortunately, though, I can't work out why. There's a centre box section, so you build the inside of the cabin that goes then inside the two fuselage halves. Probably if you made a lot of helicopters, you would have seen this type of thing. It tends to be the standard type of fit with it. Unfortunately, I couldn't get this to fit no matter which way I tried this. And as you probably know, when I do my video builds, that I'm not one of these that sort of does one, two, miss a few, 99, and there's your completed model at the end of it. I do tend to show you everything that's gone wrong, warts and all with the build. A lot of you that will remember me doing the Corsair was a complete nightmare from start to finish, but for me making a mistake and horrendous accidents with it is better because I can show you how to put it right. This is turning into another one of those builds. Now, to be honest, I did build one to this stage uh, before, but we had a little bit of trouble with the formatting and everything else like that, so I've had to buy another kit and start again. The first time it gave me a load of trouble, but I thought it was me, to be honest. Perhaps I'd rushed it because I was trying to get through the build quite quickly and things like that, and I thought I might have missed something. So when we came to doing this one, I really took my time with it, but still, it didn't fit. So anyway, part two of this build is up now. I've got to do a lot of editing, um, not to get rid of all the nasty bits, but to show you exactly where I'm going wrong and how I'm going to fix it on this particular build. Okay, so that is going to be up next week. It'll be in parts three and four. But it basically two days trying to fit the inside cargo bay. And the way I actually fixed it at the end of it was to cut one millimeter off the front of the cargo bay and then installed it. And that way, all the windows lined up because before they were all back too far because it was back too far we had an issue where we couldn't join this bottom plate it's a plate that goes in the bottom and fits on and goes on now I know a lot of people say about you know obviously a lot of test fitting and dry fitting would have fixed these problems trust me this isn't one of those it just wouldn't go any which way I actually tried it and to this day I'm going to sit here and not have a clue what went wrong but what I do know now is it's in now uh, it fitted after cutting off that bit bringing it forward a bit and everything else and I know some people have said well perhaps it's the bulkhead but the nose wheel system which is part of the cockpit is as far forward right up to the nose as it goes the rear bulkhead is right up against it there is no gap between the two but it still didn't fit so I'm not quite sure what went wrong there but I have showed you warts and all uh, everything how we're going to go through that build so the next part of that one is up there now I've probably got enough footage to be honest for another three parts because I videoed the entire fight with this one which did include getting it to this stage and then pulling it apart it had already dried so I had to cut it open and pull it all open um, but as I say using super glue it's for and against it's very quick and if you make a mistake, you can crack it and get it open. If you use hot glues, i.e. liquid cement, things like that, which welding action, obviously they're a lot more difficult. Um, but as I say, they don't grip as well. So in this, you'll see me show you how it works for and against a lot. So anyway, I'll be cracking on with that one. And hence, whilst this one fought me for three days, I didn't get on with the Tonka. So I had every sort of in my head to start the Tonka this week, but I didn't have a chance to do it. Um, videos, things like that. Obviously, those ones now are new in now in the new upgraded format. Thanks for all the comments. We've had probably about 300 PMs and emails uh, and things like that, especially on Facebook as well, saying great, you know, thanks a lot. It's really, really looking nice. It is lovely to see it in full screen now. Um, you know, we are in 720p with all the new builds, but as I said before, the older ones, and that's the ones I'm coding and doing now, because they were recorded in like 640 by 320, you can't put it on full screen because it looks blurry and horrible so you're best off to watch those in the player and not go to full screen and everything else like that unless you obviously you've got clever and you've got it on your smart tv and things like that and then it does look very nice as well so those are going through so up to date we've obviously the Takano um Takano yeah Takano is all finished the transal so I was trying to say that one um is obviously parts one and two are up now and they are in full hd full screen everything else like that and 720. The Suffer, which was a huge one because it's 15 parts, you know, so to do that one took oh, five, five days to get that all up there. Anyway, that's up there now. The Seafire is all done. That's up there now. The MiG-29 is all done. That's up there now. The B-24 is all done and that's up now. And now we're working through the non-HD ones now. Um, and they take, for some reason, even longer than the HD ones. It's obviously the way they're coded and things like that. So we are going right the way through those. So anyway, that's it for the forum, well, the site and everything's been happening this week. So now, let's have a look at what we get in the box. Okay, so, 
First up for our review is um, the Great Wall Hobbies um, Devastator. Now this is the, the TB-1. Um, now I'm going to be really honest with you guys, I have no idea about this plane whatsoever. Um, I'm not clued up on, on it. I don't like to read things on the internet, so I haven't gone around and read all the pros and against. But normally, I've got a rough idea about an aircraft and how it is. But this particular aircraft is one of those that has slipped me by me, um, and I don't know much about it at all. So forgive me if I make a complete hock up of this particular build. Normal thing, great wall, nice artwork as you always get on here. A nice sturdy box, and it's a top opening box, and we really do like top opening boxes. So in the box, we have a little bag here with our clear parts. Very nice to have it separate bagged, as I always say. Looking at the clearness of the parts, they do look very, very nice indeed. What we're gonna do is just angle the light away a bit. I'm gonna bring you guys in so you can see exactly what we've got here. So, okay, we're just, it's in one of these resealable bags, which is quite nice. So whilst we've got it here, let's hop the clear parts out and see how clear we really are. I must admit, we said about Great Wall before, but when you look at the clarity of that glass, it's absolutely stunning. It's like um, extremely glass-like. And when you hear it, it sounds like it's gonna break, which is always a good thing, because it means it's very, very clear. But certainly, you can probably see some of these clear parts as you go around here, very, very nice. So immediately I'm looking, we know this does this sort of concertina effect um, on the clear parts, uh, the glass work, it comes together, so obviously the cockpit bits go back and then the rear ones come forward for the rear gunner. So as you can see, you get the two options. You can either have it as single um, or you can have it as the one piece. So you've got two options, which is quite nice. If you break it, you know you've got another one. Okay, now let's put, pop this back in the bag because we don't want to wreck it before we start it working on it. So, but it is nice to see companies now um, which are singly bagging and taking a little bit of care over these parts like this. So, so having a little foam bag here is a very nice touch because even though they're in bags like this, sometimes you get that thing where they're in here, they're rattling around and they scratch through the plastic or they just literally scratch the plastic itself. So, main fuselage sections. These bags are very nice. And for all those people who say I'm gonna cut my hand off one day, see I don't have to do it on this. Because they're resealable, but they're a bit rustly and a bit crispy. Okay, what have we got? Recessed panel lines, as you would expect. And we've got recessed riveting as well. Okay, we have got raised parts as we go through this as well. So you've got obviously raised detail, hatches, things like that. Um, and then obviously uh, hinges, those types of things, as well as recessed. So very, very nice, very, very fine. I can find no real sink marks, anything else. Nice sink mark touch though, you might see it, is on the rudder. There you go, you catch it in the light. You can see how obviously it's fabric, the rear part of the rudder, but you've got the ribbing detail showing through. So you get that sort of well, that effect really, for want of a better word. It's better than I can do. Ejector pin marks, normal, very shallow, very nice. So we've actually got framework detail on the inside for obviously we're gonna see. There's a lot of glass on top of this one, so you're gonna see down in there. So it's nice to have this type in there. Yes, there is ejector pin marks in there. Would you see them? Probably not, okay. So next bag up, we've got engine details and things like that. And these nice resealable bags. <clears throat> Part of card shop would be all right. Okay, we've got torpedo, two-part torpedo, but it is one solid piece round. So you've got a seam line running all the way round, but again, very, very nicely detailed. Engine detail, again, very, very nice. We've got no problems with that. The wheels, as, is, as you'd expect, uh, 148, it's one-piece wheels. Cow flaps, either we've got a choice here, it's open or closed. So that's quite nice, um, you've got them there. But we're just looking, I've got no flash whatsoever on this. Ejector pin marks all look to be nicely out of the way. So that's quite nice. I don't, you know, I've got two things I don't like about kits. One is, is where the props are molded in one, okay? It's nicer to have the blade separate and you can feed them in a nose wheel gear which molded it in one. So that's one of those which, you know, maybe you might want to change. Nice detail, you've got everything down here, fire extinguishers, the seats have got nice detail as well, but it's quite odd to see 
the torpedoes here in one piece. So you've got the round sections obviously front to back instead of two halves going together. I can't remember the last time I've seen that. Okay, wing section. We will get it out so we can have a look. So okay, um, this particular kit, if you imagine the old corrugated iron effect, uh, as we used to call it in the UK, it's got that wing. Okay, so you've got a very nice raised um, detail on there. And then obviously you've got recessed detail. So it is a real mix with this one. So you really wanna make your gluing and your fitting as precise as possible, because there's no way you're gonna be able to put this raised on, which is gonna make a little bit of a problem, I think. When we do leading edges of these wings on here, like this, We've got to join these ribs up top to bottom seamlessly because there's no way you're going to be able to get in here and do your normal sanding stick down here on the flat, cut it back and everything else. So it is going to be a little bit fiddly doing that one. And again, you've got the sprue joints where the sprue joints are joining on here. They're going to affect how that's going to look. So it's not going to be like two perfect parts and then you can come down. So it is going to be... A little bit of a pain I think joining those up to making them look nice and as I said because it's one of those aircraft um, I spoke about this on one of my recent builds leading edges of the wings they're one of those things where people don't take much attention to but it's one of the things everybody looks at so it's that and wing roots as well you know everyone looks at those parts you know probably because we all know it's quite a hard thing to do so you, you try and always look for the worst bit recess panel lining underneath again with this raised ribbing um, obviously we've got gear wells down here Torpedo bay, which obviously I presume you'd be able to have different types in there as you go through. But again, it's very, very nice. It's very sharp, crisp thing. I put it on a par with um, Hasegawa. Um, you know, obviously their stuff's very crisp, very sharp, very easy to break. Okay. Well, we here we have a very nice little cow again in its own little bag. So we've got a one-piece molded cow. So I'm just looking to see if there's a seam. We don't have a seam on there at all, which means it's plug molded, as in straight down, not from the sides. If it had been, you've got a seam line running both sides, the mold halves are like this. When it's like that, the chances are it's that way up and molded, and then comes out of the mold like that. So hence why if you've got ejector pin marks down on the inside. But what that means is you don't get a sense of the top one. The only thing you will get, I hate picking these out, but you do. I don't know if the camera could be out. You've got the faintest line just down here, and that's where the mold was made. So it's the tiniest, faintest line you can actually see, and it's just literally a hair running through. But it is a very, very nice bit of molding that. Very nice to see. As I say, and it's nice to be on its own bag, so that way you don't have sprue mark on there that you've got to cut off. So it's actually popped out of the mold in one, just like that. Okay, last one up, we've got that down in here. So again, I haven't seen any flash whatsoever on a part of the kit. I've got tiny bits on the sprue, but nothing on the parts. Okay, again, extremely nice details that you've actually got. This is for the wing fold. Obviously the wing fold, there's gonna be a wing fold option on this one, is gonna go up. The cockpit itself, um, you know, as I say, of the era, so it's quite basic in its nature, but you've, we've got flooring in here. But as I said, I do like this effect that they've actually got. If you catch it in the light there, you can actually see the ribbing, um, you know, over the fabric. So it's very, very nice those, and I do like that at all. It is a nice, so I say, very, very good. Ejector pin marks, I can't see any apart from the fuselage halves where you're going to have to deal. Perhaps if you have drop flaps, we've got a few ejector pin marks just in here, but nothing that a skinny stick wouldn't take out in seconds. So, you know, self advertising. Stop it. Okay. What else do we have in the box? We have. Ah, that's nice. Nice little touch we have. Let me just move that out the artwork of the box. So there you go, pop that in your frame and you have a nice print for the artwork which would look absolutely lovely. Very nice quality, um, very nice drawing. So we'll do those in a moment. Okay, <laughs> right, okay. For those of you who don't do this before, what we've got here I just cut to the back. Okay, we've got the artwork for obviously doing 
the actual Devastator. Now the thing is, um, the Roundel system and everything else is pretty straightforward, okay? And one of the big problems you're gonna have, and I did think of that a moment ago as we were doing it, is trying to get a decal to conform over this ribbing is going to be somewhat of a nightmare because it's going to sit, you know, a good heavy duty, very hot as I would call it, softener would probably get that in with not much problem at all. But if you haven't got that and you're not too sure about it, you know, or perhaps your paintwork isn't exactly glossy, okay, it's going to be quite hard to get that in. One way to get around that would be to do this. Now this here, it's going to be quite hard to see, we catch it off of light. There you go, you can just catch it. These are masks, okay? So instead of decaling, you will actually have your roundel or whatever. So you can place that down with the deep blue, spray the light blue, everything else, or just start totally in reverse if you wanted to. And then obviously you could start with the star, so do it white, put the star down, round all over the top, okay, and everything else like that. So depending on which way you want to do it. The other thing as well you've got here, you might see this painting by numbers job all down here, okay, that is all for the glass work. So you should be able to do, just seeing here it is, the canopy is all marked just like this. So you're gonna go through and either open or close by those lots and lots of little masks. So you've got a full masking set as well as a deckling masking way. So obviously these are all done and cut through so you can place those down and do it. And I even think there, it's got the walkways. Am I correct? Can you use the walkways as well? You do, you even have a masking set for the walkway. So what you can actually do down the bottom here, spray it black, place that down, blue will be the last to go on top. So basically what you're gonna be doing, you're gonna be painting this in reverse. So you'll put the white down, okay, on the wing, stick the star in, okay? Then you'll spray the blue, okay? Then you'll go the blue and put the circle down, okay? Then you'll spray it the top camo color and weather it. So when you peel it all off, you're left with this very nicely behind. So with a little bit of pre-shading under there, it should come through very, very nicely. Same with the walkway, spray the walkway black, place the actual mask down on there, spray the rest of the plane and away you go. So whilst it's a little bit fiddly and a bit to get your head around if you've never done it before, as long as you do it in the right sequence, you'll end up with very, very nice. And I should think, to be honest, it'll be one of those things, if it won't be crisp because it wouldn't be crisp in real life. So if you do get a tiny little bit of overspray getting through and everything else like that, it's how it would be in real life because there's no way with a standard rubber mask going down as it would have happened during the war, it would have been perfect as well. So there we go, that's quite nice. So as you'd imagine, getting back on track here, very nice uh, instructions as we go through. Got them all down in here. Pretty straightforward, very comprehensive, nice and clear, showing you how it goes through. So you've got gear up, gear down option, flaps up and down, wing fold obviously up or down, uh, and everything else like that. Choice of um, torpedoes, things like that to go on there, and obviously the canopy can be done up or down as well, or slid forward and back I should say, and right the way through. The other little things we've got, a couple of little bits of white metal, which I presume are going to be for the uh, wing fold locks, so nice little touch with those. Oh, and we have stuck to the bottom of the box, which is a nice touch as well, quite a bit of photo etch, which I didn't just see in the instructions. So we've got photo etch sets here, four, got two of them, I won't get them out of the bag. Um, looks like we've got flaps, armoured plating, gun belts, things like that, harnesses, everything else down in here. And then flicking on the back, we've got engine, so we've got the wiring looms really for the ignition system on the engine and things like that, uh, radiator covers, as you imagine, things for the torpedo and all like that. So that is a very nice touch, which I hadn't spotted. <coughs> or, he says, banging on all about that uh, masking thing, or we've got decals inside here, which I won't get them out, because they're very nicely packaged, which we were saying about, nicely packaged. But you've got decals, so forget everything I just said about masking it up. You don't have to do any of that, you can just decal it, okay? So there you go, not a bad kit, very, very comprehensive. Having never built one of these in my life, in anybody's kit, let alone theirs, um, I will probably give this a build because, as I say, I've never done it before. We place that flat down. But I was saying, you know, very, very nice kit. Unusual subject. I do believe if just, you know, I, I hate to say things because I'm probably wrong, but if I do remember, they didn't fare too well in the war. I think they got shot down a lot. 
which is a bit of a shame. So it's nice to see it sort of made it as well as the more popular uh, bombers during the war and things like that. So I must say a big, big thank you to the Airbrush Company who are the UK importers for these guys. So if you want to get them, obviously direct through the Airbrush Company and go through it like that. If not, it will be available in your shops right now. Okay, so here we are over at the forum. So hopefully this will be a little bit clearer than it was last week. Um, lots of new things going on, but what I thought we'd show you was some of the uh, various group builds and things that are going on at the moment. So last week we were up here and we covered the the one for the uh, airliner transport group builds. So obviously got the 4th of March to go on that one. Uh, got 49 entries going on in there at the moment, only 18 complete, so we need to get on with that one. So I thought what we'd do is have a look at some of the completed ones in the bug-eyed SIG. So this is actually the, the final reveal photos for everything that's for the F-18 Hornet. So if we have a look at Eric Ross's one to start with. So we've got a nice F-18C, which is the older type. Um, the easiest way to tell it is obviously the straights here and the intakes. Rounded ones on the uh, older type, square ones on the new ones, and the straights up here, or the larynxes as they're commonly known, uh, are obviously a lot bigger. The wing size is obviously bigger, there's lots of other things, but that's the easy way to tell. Lovely job on that one, nice weathering. Unusual to see it with a wing fold, because doing the wing fold on these isn't the easiest thing in the world. The kit one, it has them down, you have to chop them off and put them up, so Eric's done a lovely job on that one. Same with the weathering, nice to see the cag birds as always. But you say as you go through, nice to see the mottling effect. Um, you know, obviously you can give them a wash and you know the grimy look and then cut back with your original colour to give it the mo this mottly effect. What that actually is, is the corrosion control crews in reality go around and touch up all these areas where they tend to get a lot of wear and tear to stop them getting obviously salty and everything else. Nice job on the burner cans as well. But as you can see, nice griming as well. So obviously with a mixture, pre-shading and then post-painting in afterwards, a wash and then you know coming back in, doing the grime streaks and everything else really does show it off very, very nicely. So it's a nice build on that one and having the wing fold up makes it easy to stow. So lovely job on that. Again, the underside, when you see hornets, they're absolutely filthy on the carriers. Cag birds are always kept a little bit cleaner than everybody else's. But uh, again, so very nice job on that one, Eric. That's a lovely build. Okay, next up, <clears throat> this is uh, our very own Hans. Now, this is the more modern version of the F-18. We find a, a shot that's similar to Eric's on that diagonal. I haven't really got one there. But you can see this area up here, it's more smooth. It's a lot bigger. The aircraft itself is a lot, lot bigger. It's almost got twice the range of the original Hornet, and you have square intakes. Again, another Cag Bird, the Black Knights. Obviously, you probably remember those from the good old Tomcat days. But again, nice, very subtle on this one everywhere. So you've got a nice mixture of uh, weathering on it, just to give it that nice, worn look, in scale look, without you know tons of grime and everything coming off. But it's nice to see the cag birds, especially the glossy work on the tails, everything else like that. Sidewinder, the X version as well. On there, this is what we're on about with the intakes. So the more modern Hornets have this square type. Um, you know, where the, obviously the older ones have the, the more rounded. Again, nice work on the gear. The way that this actually works is on this particular kit, having built one or two, this bottom section down here comes along and it bolts to the underside of the two fuselage hives. So this area all around here and down here is a really complicated joint. So it's done a nice clean build of that because it sort of comes down here, there's the join. It would be joined along here and then comes along to this join here. So he's done a lovely job because to get that right isn't very easy on this particular kit. It's one of those nasty type of areas. So as you can see, he's done a lovely job on that one. So good job, Hans. <clears throat> Back to the older F-18s again. Nice one this is. I actually like this one. Nice photograph. It's got that real heavy sense of scale with it. Probably the lighting as well. Um, it's got one of those sort of lighting sources coming in from one angle. So you get the shadowing and everything else. But a fantastic cag bird. And again, as I said, lovely job. Nicely weathered. It's got that real heavy, warm look to it. I like that one at all. Obviously hydraulic streaking underneath is a lovely little touch as well. Again, anyone who's built this kit knows it comes with no weapons as well, which is always a bugbear with the Hasagawa, but you do get these twin ejector racks or horizontal ejector racks with it. But again, very, very nice. The only trouble with these kits is they're all like it. Uh, the early ones is that you don't get anything down the back there. You know, it's just a hole. Uh, you can get some FOD covers, but there are companies out there who do make them um, full depth resin ones. So it's a very nice job on that one. 
back to another Super Hornet. This is Bobby's one. Now this must be the Revel kit. The difference with the Revel kit is the flaps uh, and the front leading edge slats here um, are all molded in the up position. Now you can move them, that's not so much of a problem, but uh, it, it's not an easy thing to do because this edge down here also has to be moved as well. Just coming up to a, a full photo. We'll go back. That's what you get for clicking on. There we go. You say it is a, a nice weathering job, obviously pre shaded down there again to come up. The kit itself isn't as nice as the Hasegawa kit by a long way, but certainly for bang for your buck, you do get a lot of kit for your money because I think it's almost a third, two thirds cheaper than the other one. Nice loadout, as you can see, good example of the intakes there, and obviously the size difference when you look at it from above compared to the other one. Again, nice griminess underneath. So, very nice job on that, Bobby. Nice to see some Blue Angels. I thought actually we'd get a lot more of these, but Robert's done this one. Again, working with gloss works, never easy at all. So trying to do panel lines and everything else like that with gloss work can be a real, real nightmare. And obviously don't forget, this is the smaller one, the 172nd scale, right the way through. I can't remember whose kit this was now. Uh, Ding, ding, ding. Academy, this is the Academy 172nd kit, but very nice as you can see as you go through. So, very nice job on there, Blue Fiber. And not easy to get the decals to conform over lumps like that without it looking totally out of register. So, good job on that one. Now, we're talking scale, <laughs> we're talking tiny scale now. This is a 144 little in-flight one, fantastic job on this one for something that is literally just so small and obviously it's got Felix on the tail being the actual Tomcatters so it gets bonus marks from me <coughs> as being a yeah, Tomcatters fan but again lovely to see such a small scale as an in-flight one like that, it's absolutely lovely so well done Paul, that's an absolutely brilliant one on there Back to the sea, the aggressors, aggressor ones. So they used to call them flanker, lizard, and something else for the ball. So this will be the flanker one. So as I said, the markings that they actually do them is very interesting because you've actually got these metal areas at the back to make it look like a flanker. Uh, and then obviously the flanker colors right the way over it. So a lovely paint job on that one. Very nicely done. And as you can see, it's a very nice clean build because they are complicated kits to go together. You know, getting these areas down the back here, these the flaps and the slats to all sit right and everything else isn't easy at all. So he's done a great job on that. Lovely colours. Nice work on those burner cans as well. And nice to see an aggressor one. Okay, so we've got another Revel kit, I believe. Yeah, this is the E, the Echo. So Gabe's done this one. As I said, when you look at the differences, the, the way that this kit goes together is completely different to the Hasegawa kit. Um, you know, it's basically, this cockpit section goes on completely different. It's, it's a, a, a real change of a kit if you've done it. It's actually closer to the old Italian one, and I used to actually like the Italian one. I built lots of them. It gives you a good idea from a top-down view of the amount of surface area that the aircraft has and the amount of fuel this thing can carry compared to the sea. It's a nasty join, that one, at the best of times to get that in, because obviously you've got the clear part, so you can't be chucking too much glue and stuff down there in case you get any fogging coming up there. So it's a particularly nasty area on the kit to try and get right. So it's best of a, a bad mix on that one. So one done with that one, Gabe. That's very good. Okay, who've we got? David's one. This is the Italeri Hornet, which is an incredibly old kit. This one is, I wouldn't say a nasty kit, but it's a real challenge at the best of times to try and get this one to go together. So a nice in-flight pose again. Nice to see this one. This kit is very, very old compared to all the new ones you're seeing, like the Hasegawa's um, and even the the, the later Italeri ones. They never did the C. It was called the, the A, B and uh, C, D version all rolled into one. 
but it's not a particularly nice kit so it's great to have it come on come out just like that with some nice work in the box itself you can either do it as a, a C or a B version uh, the C or the D with the single or the twin cockpit and things like that so nice job on that one David okay another one from him this is the 148 this is the Revel version now I've never built the Revel version I do believe it's raised panel line so this will be Lizard uh, in the Lizard camo scheme again very nicely done a different scene on a red background I don't think I've ever seen it on a red background so this is the F Foxtrot new Super Hornet or Super Rhino okay and this is Lloyd this is the CF18 so nice with the gold work something completely different you have to give it to the Canadians they do come up with some cracking schemes uh, all told compared to the other ones but as you can see it's not a, an easy scheme to work with because you've got obviously large decals and you've got a lot of paintwork and pairing them up to get them all to line up is not an easy thing at all so well done to him on that that's a great job Okay, that's it for this week. Um, thanks a lot for watching as always. Everyone have a great weekend. Happy modelling. Remember, we are on Facebook and I know a lot of people say you can't see much of what goes on the site because it's all hidden away. Pop over to the Facebook page. We tend to keep, or I tend to keep it pretty much updated with everything, uh, with full videos and things like that, that perhaps you can't see on the main site. So remember, have a look at us on the Facebook page. Click the like button just down here on the side menu and it will take you direct there to it as well. So until next week, everybody, happy modelling and take care.